Doctors on your radio on a Saturday morning. Good morning, Doctor Nicola. Good morning. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Yeah, my the, the gunk is starting to get a little better. Is it? Yeah. Mine is like all of a sudden. It's like really weird. We have this like I know, like sharing a gunk. We're sharing <laughs> gunk. Wow, what's going on That's there? Very strange. Yeah. I don't, I don't. Yeah. Let's move on from that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> we we won't share our private lives on here. <laughs> wow. Nine seven zero. Five five three nine thousand one is the number for the Rock Doctor. That's the text line if you want to call in. Nine seven zero three eight five one zero five three is the phone number. A lot of stuff going on this uh, this last week. Uh, you were you were at another one of those doctor conventions. I was. I um, went out to Baton Rouge and I was able to speak to the Louisiana Association of Medical Psychologists. And I didn't actually even know that that existed. Medical psychology. Yeah, I didn't even know medicine existed in Louisiana. I thought, you know, they shake a snake at you. And Apparently, they're I'm pretty progressive. Their acupuncture laws are really, really progressive. Nice. And, um, and so medical psychology is basically what a psychiatry used to be, where you have people who are trained in psychotherapy who can also prescribe medications. Nice. I know. It was really cool. It was great. So I did two two-hour lectures for them. And it was really, really. So cool. you know, you know about head stuff. I do. Th I do know a thing about head stuff. Oh, well, heart stuff. I would hate to find out what your diagnosis of me is. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. I think just you know, just having a good time. Trying. Just having a good time. The, uh, the what was the health fair that happened this? The time? nine health fair. The nine health fair. Yeah, that happened a few weeks ago. Or mm -hmm. a few. Okay, mm -hmm. right. So yeah. you so probably people are getting their results in now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, it takes a, a week or two to get the stuff back from the lab. Yeah, especially something like that where they're doing hundreds of people so in, a, in, a, in a morning. All of a sudden, the lab you know that normally does Loads two up. or three a day gets <laughs> three hundred, and they're like, <laughs> Yeah, I think they, I don't know. I think they might have a mobile lab, and they travel around the country. Right. Mm -hmm. My, the reason I bring that up is, as, as a doctor, have you seen, so people go to these health fairs, which is good. Mm -hmm. It's good, good information. Yep. You get your results back, and do people go into panic mode? Uh, I get a lot of, I have a lot of appointments next week. <laughs> Real, okay. Yeah. And I'm like, well, oh, I haven't seen you in so long. Yeah, I'm talking about my, my lab results. It's like, okay, that's so fine. What, what, so what, when they, typically at a health fair like that, what do they do? You know, they're looking at the basics, right? They're looking at red and white blood cells, check for anemia, they're looking at cholesterol, they're looking at liver and kidney function, electrolytes. Um, you know, they will do a vitamin D if you ask. They will do a real um, cursory thyroid screen. And then, uh, what else? Oh, and hemoglobin A1C. And then probably I would assume your blood pressure. Um, you know what, I would assume so, but I'm not sure. <laughs> really, yeah. I mean, that, that's like, First thing you do when you walk into any kind of a doctor's office is they take your temperature. Well, this is just there. This is just a big discounted lab opportunity. Oh, okay. Basically. All right. Yeah. So, but I mean, I think, but there's other vendors there, so I'm sure there's somebody there who's taking blood pressures. What is high blood pressure? You, like, like, what, what's, like, what's the, the definition, and then what's the number? Well, it just changed. Um, so now they're they're considering hypertension at 130 over. So normal textbook normal is 120 over 80. Okay. And so the top number is called the si uh, systolic, and the bottom number is called diastolic. And the way I remember that um, is that the systolic is how much pressure is in your cardiovascular system when your heart is beating, and the diastolic is how much is pressures in your system when your heart is at rest. So, you know, it kind of beats and rests, beats and rests. Um, and so it just basically tells us how much pressure is in the tube. You know, it's kind of like when you blow up a balloon, like it can handle so much, but if you stretch it too far, bam, yeah, something bad happens. So that's why we want to look at blood pressure. We want to see how much pressure is in the system overall. What causes high blood pressure? Oh my gosh, it can be caused from so many reasons. There's so many reasons. You know, certainly lack of cardiovascular exercise because the heart, we forget that the heart is a muscle. And the muscle, uh, just like our quads or our, you know, biceps or whatever, right. if it doesn't get exercised, then it, then it doesn't function as well. It's not as strong. And so if you think about what your heart is doing, it's literally pumping blood all over your body that has come through the venous system into the lungs to get oxygen. So basically, it's not just that the heart is pushing blood all over your system, but it's taking oxygen and nutrients everywhere in your body. Right. So the less... It's the fuel know, pump. It's a fuel <laughs> pump. So yeah, exactly. So like the less active and the less conditioned your heart is, then the, the, the harder it's going to be for you to feel good in your body. So what causes it? You know, kidney issues. And people don't realize that the kidneys actually have a hormone that um, has a lot to do with regulating blood pressure. And so when we're not drinking enough water, when we're not getting enough minerals in our diet, then we can cause some kidney 
distress, and then that can translate into high blood pressure as well. Right. I had a uh, I had a blood pressure scare last year. Okay. And I mean it 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 got pretty high. It scared you. Mm-hmm. Well, it was to the point where I was feeling lightheaded, and yep. mm-hmm. I, I and I didn't know what it was. And I'm like, this is unusual. So I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go to the doctor. Good for you. Because <laughs> a lot of people are like, ah, I'll just wait that out and see what happens. They took my blood pressure three times. Just to confirm it because it was so high. Yeah, it was yeah. like 160 over 110. Ooh. Yeah, and he, and he goes, uh, you got to get this under control or like you're not going to live to see your next birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And well, and it's because part of what can happen is that, um, you know, it can having blood pressure that high can release some of the plaque that builds up in our arteries, and then that can clog the heart and cause a heart attack, or that can clog um, the, that blood clot or that piece of lipid can, uh, you know, cause other issues in the body, and um, and that uh, it can also, you know, you, you can actually have, you know, things burst, you know, like your arteries burst, yeah. you know, like an aortic aneurysm, for example. I mean, they did the labs, and you know, it re- the labs were within normal for my mm-hmm. age range and mm-hmm. stuff, so it was a concern about that. It turned out it was stress. Yeah, stress is a huge, huge, huge component of um, blood pressure. And we were finding out now, you know, we used to think that the brain was the only organ that was receiving information and processing information. But there's research out now that shows that the heart is actually a sensory organ as well. And so the heart is actually sensing what's going on. And ha- and so the lo- longer I'm in medicine, the more I realize the brain is really kind of like a processing center, you know? Right. It re- it's receiving information from all these other places, including the gut, including the heart. But the heart's a sensory organ. And so when people are like, I don't understand why when I get stressed, my blood pressure goes up. It's like, because that's your that's your organ the, of... Uh, yeah, the, you're, that's your body saying, okay, we gotta do something. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and it's interesting. In Chinese medicine, all of the organs are associated with an emotion. And in Chinese medicine, the heart houses what they call the Shen, and the Shen translates to your spirit. So literally, the heart is the house of your spirit. See, and I hate it when I'm like walking, you know, and I'll knock my Shen against the coffee table. <laughs> oh, that hurt. oh, that's Shen. Yeah, shen. shen injury is painful. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. Mm-hmm. Okay, so what do we do? How do, how do we fix it? I mean, now I know you're going to say, well, don't stress. Well, I mean... I actually don't say don't stress anymore because I don't know that it's possible, you know, or I think it's very, very difficult without uprooting your life completely and having, you know, a lot of financial resources at your disposal, which right. most of us are stressed because we don't have that. Um, <laughs> um, there is that. You know, so it's, it's, so I tell people, you know, s- stress in the modern world is just kind of part of our day to day. I mean, even the stress of the amount of information that gets input into our bodies every day between text and emails and Facebook and news and like there's so much information coming in and that in and of itself is a stressor. We're not really designed to process, you know, 200 new pieces of information a day. You know, maybe 20, you know, is kind of our our set point. Oh, ah, the days when it was only 20. Can you can you remember when you like had like 20 pieces of information to handle and p- manage and process and respond to? I, I you know I I think I hear what you're saying. I never really thought about it, but you, when you when you put it that way, yeah. it's like, yeah, you yeah. back when I was a kid, you know, oh, what's the big choice today? Do I go to the creek and play or do right. I go, you know, ride my bike? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And so it it wasn't so um Overwhelming, right. really, you know, for lack of a better word, and and it's and what's different now, you know, either when there was a phone call, um, you know, you call, you leave a voicemail, you don't necessarily expect a call back that day, you know, you just you know the call is coming, or you wrote a letter, and then you know it's going to take four days to get there, and a day or two to read it, and four days to get back. Like we were, we weren't expected to process information so quickly. Right now, we send a text, and we're angry that in we haven't gotten a response back in two minutes. I know, I know, they always have their phone on them, right? <laughs> Yeah, I maybe know I'm in a meeting, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that's a, a big issue for sure um, well. is processing the stress. So it's not about getting rid of it. It's about starting to learn to relate to it a little bit differently and actively practicing stress management. Are there are there foods you can eat, supplements you can take that, that help in that? Uh, for, for blood pressure? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, eating more good fats is going to help blood pressure. Eating foods that are really rich in minerals, so 
you know, kelp is like the best example. Most people don't want to include. At least she didn't say kale. <laughs> well, certainly, you know, organically grown Here produce it comes. Here is, it comes. is, you know, higher in minerals. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly exercise is a big part of it. And this is, I mean, this is what happens, right? When we start getting stressed out and our plate is too full, we drop all of the things that we do to take care of ourselves. We start you know, grab in food, you know, maybe to-go food or fast food, right. you know, because it's easier. We don't have time to go to the gym because we're so stressed and so we've got so much to do. And all of these things that would prevent us being impacted by stress are the first things to drop off. Well, but now is that maybe medicine's fault because we think stress, relax. But, you, could, you know, if I'm having uh, you know, something stressful at work, oh. the first thing I don't think about is going to the gym and or going right. on a three mile hike. Right. I think, okay, I got to remove myself from that. Just yeah, <sighs> take a deep breath. Well, and unfortunately, what most of us do for stress relief involves alcohol or sitting on the couch and watching endless television. You know, so it's not like we're actually practicing active relaxation. We're just kind of tuning out to our experience, okay, you know, through enough. cannabis, alcohol, television, whatever, rather than engaging in our experience. And we kind of live in a suck it up society. And so we don't necessarily talk about it because it's like, well, wah, 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 everybody's stressed. You know, right. I don't need to talk about it, especially for men, right? There's a lot of, a lot more pressure to not make a big deal about work stress or home stress. You know, I think it's harder for men to relate. Women are more, tend to be more chatty with each other. Oh, you won't believe what he just did. Oh. <laughs> but that in and of itself is stress relieving because I'm sharing it and now I'm not holding on to the charge and maybe right. we have a laugh about it. See, know. I just go out and build things. I get angry, I go out and I start pounding nails, cutting wood. Doing, Absolutely. You know. And that, but you're moving your body, yeah. right? And typically you're outside. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, there is a component. Unless of that. I screw up and the wall of the house comes down. <laughs> and then you're more stressed yeah, <laughs> than like, before. Ah! You, yeah, I'm <laughs> sure. All right, 970-385-1053 is the number. If you'd like to talk to Dr. Nicola at Pure Vita Healthcare, you can call us here, 970-385-1053. Or you could text us at 970-553-9001. This is good information. Absolutely. And you, I you're mean, not stressing me out. <laughs> wow. Too much. Fantastic. It's The Rock Doctor on X-Rock 105. Are you all about coffee? Hey, you're driven coffee from Taste Coffee. Yeah, of course. You need. Taste Coffee is located. I forget what you gave me some medicine. Yeah, I go to the Prowler. In downtown Durango. We proudly serve desert sun yeah, coffee. Totally. Open Monday through Friday, yeah. 7 to 3. And but that's why so many um, blood pressure medicines are diuretics, right? It's because it, it flushes through the kidneys. Right. Right? Yeah, so. Yeah, I did notice I peed a lot more. Yeah, you will. Because mm -hmm, it's, 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 it's the blood pressure med is actually working on the kidneys. And a lot of people don't realize that they think it's working on their heart. I just need to zone out on a, Pacific, on a desert island somewhere. <laughs> Take me with you. I am ready to, I am ready to go. <laughs> I hear the Caribbean calling me. I know. I know. We have a timeshare in Mexico, and I've been like, we haven't gone since he was Four. So, four years. X-Rock 105, you are listening to the rock doctor who just happens to be Dr. Nicola of Pure Vita Healthcare in Durango. And if you've got questions, she's got answers. Most of the time. Right? 970-385-1053 <laughs> is our number. And the text line is 970-553-9001. Okay, Dr. Love, uh, should we jump to the, are, are we cool on blood pressure? We've solved all the blood pressure issues? I guess the one thing I forgot to mention is that there are a ton of herbs that can be really, really beneficial in treating blood pressure. And uh, they don't have some of the side effects that some of the um, antihypertensives do, um, like depleting minerals, or um, a lot of them are known to create a cough, you know, which is really interesting. Um, so well, when, I, when I had it, I, all I, what I noticed is I had to go pee a lot. Well, yeah, because so there are di a lot of them are diuretics, um, which means they're working on the kidney, which goes back to what we're talking about. Right. A lot of people think they're taking blood pressure medicine, and that blood pressure medicine is working on their heart, but um, most of them are not. Huh. Uh -huh. Okay, so the herbs, what? Um, stuff like hawthorn and motherwort and uh, bilberry, actually, and... Um, uh, Raulfia, those are all really effective for blood pressure regulation, as is CoQ10. Um, so ubiquinol is the more active form of, of that, and so that's a really, really good option, and that in and of itself can bring uh, blood pressure down. 
Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, got a text here on our text line from Terry. It said, my brother was diagnosed with a chronic infection. What is that? What's a chronic infection? Yeah. It's an infection that won't go away on its own. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it, like, acute means like it's a short-term thing. Like, I don't know what happened last week, but I got a weird infection in my finger. But it it's pretty much cleared up now. <laughs> okay. Um, but chronic means it's just ongoing. Um, systemic infection means it's moved from my finger, and now it's it, like in my whole body. It's in my bloodstream. I had that. Yes, you did. Mm -hmm. had, a, had a strep infection, and it entered my finger, settled in my leg, and tore up everything between the right, two. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that was bizarre. Right. I mean, they were. No. They. I, I think I, I. I remember my doctor saying something about it. May this may be chronic or something? You know, and like I was mm -hmm. going to be on treatment for the rest of my life. Right, right, right. So that's what chronic means, right? Is that it's ongoing? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, no, I don't accept that. Right, <laughs> there's not an option. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then getting the pick line installed. Mm -hmm. That was fun going to work and go, oh, excuse me, I gotta take a half hour out here and go get myself an IV. Right, <laughs> wild. <laughs> Sitting there in, the, in my office, just boom, plug yeah. in. The, so the, crazy. Well, I thought what was crazier was the fact that they install that thing in your arm and it's a line that goes right up to your heart. Right, yeah, and it just stays there. Yeah. It just hangs out and you can go to work and do your thing and do your like, wow, uh -huh. it's come a long way. It's pretty wild. I mean, modern medicine is pretty amazing in a lot of ways. How come they don't do bloodlettings for uh, for uh, people with high blood pressure? Wouldn't that alleviate the problem? No. But no. <laughs> so leeches are actually really good for some other things, um, but not blood pressure. Why? Because you're, you're cutting down. I mean, go, I mean, go give a pint of blood. What? I mean, you're cutting down your blood volume. That's true. But, I mean you're not really addressing the underlying issue. I mean, I guess as a daily treatment, sure. Yeah, you wanna go give a pint of blood a day? Right. Yeah. How many days before you die? Yeah, but I'm pretty sure like things like using leeches, you know, we has fallen out of fashion, even though there is some. Well, I, I wasn't suggesting, you know, going to your office and saying, all right, throw a couple of leeches on right. me and drop my blood pressure here. That's good, because they freak me out. Yeah, I wouldn't do, I'd have, there would have to be, you'd have to be a dispensary because <laughs> I, I couldn't be in my right mind to uh, go in there and have you put a leech Which on me. Which is part of, yeah. I mean, that's the other thing there's, um, I mean, talking about like random bugs and um, medicine, but uh, maggots actually for chronic wounds that won't heal. If you, I've heard that. Yeah, if you put a bunch of maggots on it because they eat decaying or decayed stuff, right? Yeah. And so they get in there and they do a really good job of cleaning out a wound that just won't heal. And so um, they, you know, so that's actually a really effective treatment, but it's so gross sounding that a lot of people don't use it. Which is fine. Wow, got another text here from Cheryl. It says, why is my hair thinking? <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and interpret that as thinning. That, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 53 and healthy woman, I like my hair. Is that normal for my age? Um, it's common, but I wouldn't call it normal. So that's a, there's a difference there. So just because it's happening to a lot of people makes it common, but not necessarily just a normal thing that you just have to put up with and suck up. So for people that have thinning hair, I always start with a full thyroid panel. So go and get a TSH, free in total, T3 and T4, um, and find out what's going on with your thyroid and find someone who can read the whole panel. Well, um, can you read the whole panel? Yeah, I okay. can read the whole panel. See, I'm thinking I, I need to go in there and just like, you know, throw my credit card down on your desk and say, okay, run everything. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that vacation in the Caribbean know, suddenly it's is... It's a little uh, closer. <laughs> but I think it's a good idea. And for people who miss the Nine Health Fair, and again, I have no official ties to Cedar Diagnostics, which is a lab in town here, but they do cash pay prices. Um, so if you don't have insurance or you don't want to use your insurance or you have a huge deductible, you can go in there and pay cash at time of service and they'll draw your blood. And the prices are very comparable to the Nine Health Fair. So a lot of people will wait and only get labs done during this health fair because they think it's so cheap, but it's not actually that much more affordable than just going to Cedar and then paying it, um, paying out of pocket. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I remember back in the day asking a, a, a practice. This was this was years ago. I'm like, mm -hmm. do you, do you do a cash discount? Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, by law we can't do that. That's right. Well, the provider can't do that. There's uh, there's some sort of weird. I have actually been trying to figure this out because a lot of people have asked me to start taking insurance, and my understanding was if I start taking insurance, then I have to increase my rates in order to assume that I will get 
a percentage reimbursed from insurance. Which is so stupid. But then you can't do a cash rate too, but there's some way to like offer a discount. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of messed up. But all I, <laughs> but I, all I'm saying is, is I don't think they call it a, a cash. It's it's a prepay discount, and so a lot of people can do that, you know. Where oh. You, where you, so like when I when um, my former husband needed an MRI, we called Anima Surgical, and I said, if we pay you ahead of time, what will the cost be for an MRI with contrast? And it was like a third of the price that it would have been if they had to bill me, because then they have to pay their billers and they have to chase you up for five months and. And submit it to insurance or take payments of fifty dollars a month for the next three years. Right, and I was like, if we pay you, you know, just in full at time of service, oh yeah, it'll be like a thousand dollars. And if it wasn't, it was like thirty five hundred dollars. I mean, like crazy different. I've got another. I love how she just throws that thousand dollars. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, compared to thirty five hundred, that felt like a bargain. No, no, you're right. You know. I yeah, mean, you're right. So I mean, it's when we're talking about medical care, it's like all very relative. Sure. So, you know. I'll just let them scrape me off the side of the road. And <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> but people need this care, right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you can go to Farmington and, and get the same services for about 20 to 40% cheaper. You know, like. Really? Mm hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Why? Now, is that because you're crossing the state line or is they it. They have a different. Yeah, they have a different price structure, you know. Wow. That just. Well, I know insurance rates will change too. Yeah. Based I'm, on your state you're in? Yeah. I mean, I've. I've done that I've shot that well, wait a minute what if I get a post office box and then <laughs> is yeah I mean it, what it was a, there was a little bit of a difference but not much yeah sure yeah not enough to like get called out in a felony and go to jail for <laughs> insurance evasion that's not insurance evasion well, it, was, or whatever. it was called fraud no, how, is it, how is it fraud? You're, you because know, you don't actually live in the state you say you're living in well, and that's but kind that's of the definition of fraud yeah but I'm still paying my premium but you're paying a lesser premium based on untrue facts. That's essentially the definition of fraud. So then I'll go to the doctor in Farmington. But you don't live there. It's like paying. But if I did, who cares? But it's like paying income taxes, right? Like, you know, you, can't, you would pay income taxes in the state in which you live and the state in which you work. Because when I worked at Open Sky and I worked in Utah part of the time, I had to pay double state taxes. I had to pay to Utah and to Colorado, which sucked. Yeah, no kidding. You know, but I well, mean, but you, then you can deduct that off your federal. Yeah, I mean, there's <laughs> yes, there's all sorts of weird loopholes that I'm luckily have a CPA that takes care of all of that because it makes my eyes cross. Oh yeah, I mean, I file short form. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, just stand. I know. Uh, yeah, okay. well, ha being a my being a my business being a bit oh yeah. Owning, da, 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 da. I know owning my own business. I it's so complicated. Okay, yeah, business is completely different, yeah, totally but, yeah, but personal. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, then again, you're one of those high dollar people. You know, we're talking that six, seven figure year income. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah, so you know, you gotta <laughs> yes. seven figure income is. You, you gotta help me find yes. doc. You gotta find me there. No, uh -huh. not doc to the CPA. You, yes. you gotta, you know, hey, come on, you know, Maury, come on, make it work for me, buddy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> isn't Maury? Isn't that a good name for a CPA? Yeah. Yes, Maury. It is. Yeah, Maury, yes. Maury, babe. Yeah, yeah. come on, mm -hmm. help me out here. Yes, yes, exactly. But is that how it goes? Mas o menos, yeah, but only in you know speaking to each other, <laughs> you know, not on not on email. We don't have those conversations via email. Well, no, because the government <laughs> reads your emails. <laughs> well, that's kind of it, right? There's a no no, no documentation. You got to be careful. No, I'm just kidding. That. You got to pay your taxes. So, all right. So, I, I, the insurance thing, whatever, you cash prepay. So, should people ask about the prepay? You most people don't, but you should. So, I, again, I had a girlfriend and she um, has type 1 diabetes and she ended up needing an eye surgery. And so they were going over to Grand Junction to get an eye surgery and they had called the office and, you know, said, how much is this eye surgery going to cost? And I forget the exact numbers, but it was something like three or $4,000 if they paid ahead of time. If they paid the day of, it was an extra grand. And, um, and they were like, okay, well, we'll pay ahead of time. So when she went in for her surgery, the bill was paid. Like, no unexpected cost. She knew, they knew exactly what they were getting. Well, about a month later, they get in a bill in the mail from the same office for $16,000 for the same surgery. And they called up, and they were like, oh, you never should have gotten that. Yes, you, were, you have already paid, whatever, whatever. But that's what they would have been billed if they hadn't paid ahead of time. But then had that been submitted to insurance, insurance would have taken their 70% discount, and the practice would have gotten the same $3,000. Hence the prepay discount. Right? Got it. 
But they were because they weren't going through insurance, they would have been on the line for this inflated thing. So if you have medical bills, I know a lot of people just end up avoiding it and not thinking about it and just kind of la 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 like I'm not, really, blah, 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 I'm not blah, opening blah, these blah, envelopes. No, the Charlie you know. Brown thing. Bum, 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 right, bum, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. But I'm telling you, the hospital or the provider wants 30% of your money more than he wants or she wants 0% of your money. You know yeah, the I bottom mean? line is they want their money, they, so they're well, going to... They, well, they want some of your money. Sure, <laughs> if no, they're not but... going to get all of their money, they want some rather than none. Right. So if you call them and say, I know I got this bill for X, Y, and Z, what can you do? You know, they'll be like, oh, we put you on a payment plan and we'll knock this off by 50%. You know, when I was pregnant with Jackson, uh, my insurance you rejected. You pregnant with Jackson? I was. Your son? I know. See, I thought he just was just hatched. Yeah. <laughs> Out of a dinosaur egg. <laughs> Some kind of an egg. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> he didn't, I, I mean, he looks like a Cabbage Patch kid. <laughs> he does. <laughs> um, a little reference for those of you who were alive back in the 90s. But it was super <laughs> awful because I had insurance and, um, and I was doing a home birth, which the total price for all of my prenatal care, labor and delivery, and six weeks of postnatal care was 3500 bucks. That's it. Wow. You know, that's all. Compared to, what, 10 or 15 grand just to do the labor and delivery, you know, yeah. minus, you know, not even including the pre and postnatal care. Do you, are you listening to this, Jackson? Do you hear what you put your mom through? <laughs> $3,500 just to have you? But for 10 or 11 months of care was amazing. You know, I mean, amazing. I thought. No, don't, don't, don't lose this. Oh. I'm, 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 putting, <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to get his blood pressure up here. <laughs> How old are you now, Jackson? Oh. Okay, he's like six. So, um, yeah, if I can get a six-year-old's blood pressure up, this would be good. <laughs> that's, that's the goal? That's my goal today. <laughs> yeah. He got chocolate sauce on top of his yogurt this morning. So, so wow, that, 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 that's amazing. 35, yeah. I mean. But so I had insurance, though, that to take care of just the regular lab work. And it was just routine, regular prenatal labs. And the insurance company hadn't um, um, contracted with Cedar where I'd gotten my labs done. And so they rejected all of the lab work for like regular straight up prenatal care i'm like for re for reals right now anyway incredibly long story short they're like yeah sorry and i was like you could have told me or told cedar ahead of time that i needed to go to a different lab but nobody told me anyway um incredibly long story short i called cedar and it was like twelve hundred dollars worth of labs you know all said and done within uh, nine months yeah. of pregnancy and um and they <laughs> cut it down to like three or four hundred bucks and they were like just send us a, send us a check you know, whatever, whatever, because it, it's such a game to get reimbursed right. after the fact, and they spend, you know, forty or fifty thousand per biller per year in salary. Just hire people just to chase you down to get your money. Right. So if you give them your money up front, they want less of it because it's not as expensive for them. Right. That makes sense. I I I, I, ooh, I hate insurance companies. It's well, it's and it's getting worse. I and mean, worse. it's a necessary evil. I get it, that. It, is it though? Well. In a perfect world, no. I mean, some we've talked. We're trying to put together getting those the the practice here that uh, does the you pay a monthly mm -hmm. membership fee mm -hmm. and yeah, whole health family medicine. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I love. We're working on getting them in here to mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah, maybe in a couple of weeks. I like I like that idea. Mm -hmm. It's and, awesome. And yeah, you know, you, you come down when you need a heart transplant. Yeah, you, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Right. But mm -hmm. you know, you break an arm or something like that. But even then, so my girlfriend, um, the same girlfriend that needed the eye surgery, had a kidney transplant this summer, and she's well, she's a mess. Well, she's got type one diabetes. Okay, it, so it yeah, it takes a toll, you yeah. know, um, over time. And yeah, so, I wasn't saying that to be rude. I mean, yeah, I'm, but yeah, I mean, diabetes is a really big deal. Again, just because it's common doesn't mean it's not devastating. Right. You know. Right. Um, so here she is preparing for transplant. She's been on dialysis. She feels like death. I think she had like sixteen percent kidney function. I mean, she was really really ill mm -hmm. you know um, and here she and then I went up to see her post transplant and she was probably 10 weeks post transplant when I was up helping her out and she was dealing with insurance companies every day and I'm like you just had a major organ transplant and you're having you're to deal you're sick as a dog yeah you almost died twice you know you just had a really intense surgery you're in recovery and she's on the phone stressing out about which insurance is going to cover which piece because when you when you get um, diagnosed with stage four or five kidney failure, you and you're going to get a transplant, you have to switch to Medicaid, um, and some weird thing. But Medicaid will only cover you for three years, and then they will drop you. 
And so, uh, and then you have to find private insurance again. Because <laughs> Good luck with that. But she's going to need anti-rejection drugs for the rest of her life. Yeah. So if you think that getting a kidney was stressful, it's nothing compared with the insurance red tape that she's had to deal with just to not die. I mean, in a very, in like a cut and dry, I mean, and she, her diet's impeccable. She, she exercises every day. She, I mean, there's nobody who would receive a, an organ who would take better care of it. And they're actually considering moving to France. Because in, in two to three years because they don't know if they're going to be able to afford to live here anymore once her Medicaid insurance kicks off. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I know. And the French will take her just like that? Pardon? And the French will take her just like that, huh? Th yeah. Something like that. Wow. I mean... Yeah. We're talking with Dr. Nicola of Pure Vita Healthcare in Durango. She is the rock doctor. Your your calls and questions are welcome at 970-385-1053. That's the number if you want to call and get on the air. Or you can text us at 970-553-9001, and they're backing up here. Awesome. We start to jaw jack. And I, in the, in the text. <laughs> you know, me and you? No. No, that never happens. Never. It's the rock doctor on <laughs> X-Rock 105. Hey, by the way, yes, sir. Uh, they, my, they didn't have a reservation for me at Econo Lodge. I don't know if we should. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Do we only do like a, a three month yeah. thing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you didn't we have to pay for it. No. Okay, well, I'll really call him. Sure. No, so working out. They took care of me. Okay. Okay. Me too. Okay. Like, well, I like, still need to Hands down, down. like, my I guy's like, dude, you're not paying. Don't pay somebody. That. I haven't seen him. Like, I like working with them. I'm going to pay him. It's been too long. I'm going to pay him exactly what I'm working. We're doing the same project. And I've always done that. Yeah. 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 North. And action! Just, just, eye to eye action Jackson! Yeah, I, I have this tool. It's, we'll just say it's a straight edge. Here we go! No, we're not doing it! Please play the open. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Hi, right, the Rock Doctor is on XRock 105. Our phone number is 970 385 1053. The text line 970 553 9001. Yeah, she's Dr. Feelgood. <laughs> Some days. Doctor, bad news half the time. <laughs> it's not bad news. It's being informed. I know. It's, it's information. It's actually, if you take it that way, it can be empowering news. Well, Jamie, you're going to die. <laughs> I, I was not the doctor that said that to you. No. It changed your life, though. You changed your career. and I didn't change my career. Well, I, changed the piece of your career. Changed you locations. Changed, changed your job. Yeah. That was, oh, wow. I don't even want to think about that. Exactly. But how long will we subject ourselves to something that is horrible just because we think we have to? Well, you have kids. I have kids. That's a <laughs> lifetime commitment. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it's been a topic of conversation this week for sure. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, text here from Mike on our text line says, I heard taking multivitamins was basically a waste of money. Is that true? You know, there's a lot of people that will say that. Um, that it, and, and I feel like it really depends on the quality of your multivitamin. I feel like you have to make sure that there aren't a bunch of weird fillers and binders. I think taking tablets is not great for most people because they're just harder to digest. Um, so taking a capsule is a good idea. Um, but, when, you know, to start out, you know, if people are willing, I would much rather that they take a scoop of green foods powder. You know, and there's a bunch of different green foods on the market. And that's going to be really, really rich in vitamins and minerals in their whole food form. And so that's... Um, hey, where's my green sludge today, by the way? Where, where, where's my green sludge? I know. I thought about it. <laughs> I did. I did. We were, we were playing Legos. And, and in fact, you know what? You, you, could, uh, you, you could... that. I'm going to give you a marketing tool Great. here. Uh -huh. Greensludge.com. Yeah, no, yeah, it's <laughs> Dr. Nicola's Green Sludge. That sounds horrible. Who would buy? Who would I would buy that because I think it's funny. Well, that, <laughs> but that's because you tasted it first, and now you know it tastes good. I don't think from no, a I marketing think people, point of view, people know that that when you eat healthy, it tastes like crap. But it didn't taste like crap. That's the point. You're not supposed to market it like, yeah, it's gonna taste like crap. So might as well suck it up and call it sludge. Yes. No. Yes. Hey. I'm no. That, okay. Well, you don't gonna, we have texts? I want to talk. I, I, I'm trying to help you. You're telling me that this whole doctor thing isn't making you rich, which I find hard to believe. I'm uh, sure you do. And and uh, but no, I, I think this would be great. Doctor Nicola's green. 
Durango Green Sludge. Durango Green Sludge. Durango Green. Dr. I know, Nicholas. But with all the mind spill and everything, you can, people are trying to I didn't say about orange sludge. sludge. I know, but like the word sludge, you know. I don't know. It evokes that, that mind spill. Animus thing. River Orange I know, sludge. right? <laughs> Gross. Extracted from the Spring Mountain mm. River. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, from Gary on our text line at 970-553-9001. Are there foods yeah. you can eat to help regrow your hair? Um, wow. So, so pay attention, uh, thinning hair lady. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so things that are high in minerals will actually help regrow hair, and it's high in silica as well. And so you want to, there's some teas that are high in minerals and things like that. Um, yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's a, you have to figure out why the hair is thinning in the first place. Right. I mean, I've seen those, uh, those, those ads, you know. The hair regrowth protocol, you know, mm -hmm. eat a mango followed by a pound right. of kale right. and, you know. Or the baseball caps that have the little electrodes in them. Have you seen that one? Yeah. I was just on the airplane. I was like, wow, that seems, I would try that if I had that <laughs> issue. Because it seems pretty easy. I guess I'm okay being middle-aged and knowing my hair is just going to get thinner. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think it's harder for ladies, honestly, than it is for men because there's a social acceptability about men going bald. It might not be how you want to look, but it's like, eh, you know, a lot of men go bald. But for women, you know, having thin or balding hair is, is hard because there's a social expectation of, of beauty that men have a lot more flexibility on. All right. That's a whole other conversation. It right? certainly is. Uh, <laughs> You're just going to avoid that. Got a text here from <laughs> Wondering. Okay. Okay. Just <laughs> do the pills in magazines that say your penis will grow at least three inches longer have any truth? I don't know what magazines you're reading, but I've never seen that. Three inches longer. That feels like a lot of inches. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so, um... How? How? No! Uh, save your money, pal. Yeah. <laughs> this is Dr. Jamie. <laughs> There's no pill that could possibly make, I mean, yeah, okay, it can maybe make you get a harder. little more harder, but you're not, it's not, three inches? Your yeah. skin would be like, ah, it'd be like yeah. the Hulk, ah, ah, no, I can't imagine. That just makes me freak out, I'm sorry. Wow. Good God, I can't imagine it going for, ah, no. <laughs> More, no, more. wondering, you're, no, don't. <laughs> more is not always better. Is that, what, is, that, is that what I'm hearing? The voice of, no, I just can't imagine three inches of growth with one pill. <laughs> but I, No, over time, okay, mm. but. Well, I'm going to go out well, and, I don't think I'm going to go down to Carver's <laughs> tonight and uh, here, I let me take this. I don't think it meant you take one pill and it just happens immediately. I think it's like your supplement where it's growing you over time. Do the pills in magazines pills, that say right. you will grow at least three inches longer have any truth? There was no time frame. Right. It doesn't frame. say you'll take one pill. It's not like a herbal Viagra that like, is <laughs> off, you know? Like, but that's a serious issue, you know? Okay, fine. Let's talk about it. It's a serious issue. All right, so the good Lord didn't bless you with, uh, with much down below the waistline. So if you're a guy. I, for the second time, I'm reading a book called Pussy, A Reclamation. Okay. Did I say that on the air? I just did. Well, you just did. You're a doctor. Yeah, you so, but it's the name of a book. Well, p part of the reason she's calling it a reclamation, this is kind of an aside, but we'll go there, is that you know there aren't really any terms for a woman's genitalia that describes the whole thing. Because a vagina is really just the, it's just the canal, right? It's just a part of it. And so she's saying pussy kind of incorporates all of it. But part of what she's talking about is this idea of sensuality. And there's because we have a primarily patriarchal culture, there's so much focus around sex on intercourse. But for women, that's not necessarily what's the most pleasurable. So even if you've been comes, less guys. endowed, there's a lot of ways to please your partner, um, your male partner or your female partner. Okay. You know, that go beyond intercourse and penetration. Uh, look, I, I, I understand, but you know, mm -hmm. for, for guys, it's, it's, it's a pride thing, whatever, you know, and, and I get it. You know, may, like I said, maybe you weren't blessed, you know, with. But why is it a pride thing? 
because the assumption is, is because that Winky, the one-eyed wonder worm, and when you can't even <laughs> see the guy, you know, is is bad. <laughs> but 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 it's bad. But what's underneath that is that it's bad because the assumption is you can't please your woman. No, the assumption is I ain't gonna be able to do anything to, to please myself either. It's not there. Oh no! But I'm pretty sure even the w Winky worm can be real pleasure. Yeah, if I want to go find a pair of tweezers every day. <laughs> Lubricated tweezers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, but back, but here, here's these companies marketing. To, I know, but they're, they're, we're playing into this idea that I, as I am, am not okay. Well, that, hello? But it's not, but my point is, is it's not Have true. you watched TV recently? I'm tired of the penis-centric world view that it's all about, about that. Like, pleasure can come in so many other forms. There are so many other ways to have satisfying connection with yourself or with a partner, <laughs> you know? Oh, do and like, I kind of want to read this book. <laughs> it's a great book. I highly recommend For All Men, Chapter 4, which is named Clitoracy. Okay. Fine. Fantastic. Okay. I'm telling you, it's, it's if you have a partner, you should read chapter four of Pussy okay, but, of Reclamation. Now, but back There's to another this. pussy book out there that is not the same book, so <laughs> make sure you get the one with the subtitle of A Reclamation. It's by Regina Thomas Howard. <laughs> All right. Otherwise known as Mama Gina. Well, this is this has been a great show. I'm, I, 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 this is probably <laughs> our last one. show, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> but again, let's go back to Wondering's question. Okay. Do these pills work? Not to my knowledge, you know, but they and, play... and how would they work? I mean, what could you possibly take that would cause you growth over a, so a six the, month period of time? The only thing that I can think of is that they would increase blood flow to the penis, which, what, would which then... is like what your Viagra's and stuff yes, do. Yes, exactly. And there are herbal supplements that can increase blood flow and help erectile dysfunction or mm -hmm. help, you know, because a lot of times. You know, again, I guess we're just going here. Um, it's not a question of not being able to get it up at all, but not being able to get it up all the way. Okay. You know, so it's... Um, all right. Since we went there, <laughs> and the heart, the Chinese, is the Shen. Yes. What's the penis? Wow, that's a really good question. Aha! Uh -huh. I stumped the doctor! Oh! Yay! <laughs> it's get, time to play Stump the Doctor on x -Rock. We should get Ricky, our acupuncturist, in here, and she would be much more informed No, because she'd want to stick needles somewhere, and that is not happening. Oh, you've never had an acupuncture needle in you? <gasps> oh, yes, this is happening. <laughs> Fantastic. It's the Rock Doctor on X Rock 105. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is happening. That was great. I'm going to call Ricky. Oh, you're going to call Ricky right now? I'm wondering if I can switch it up a bit. Oh, right. No, but they really see, I see Good them morning. all the time. <laughs> What's that? Guaranteed. Three inches. Like, you was are you, nine inch. Was that you that texted that? That was me. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I'm always wondering. I'm like, I, I'm like Megan Trainor. I'm like, I shape what my mama gave me. It's like, I ain't, I ain't changing it. Right. It took me this long to be happy with being skinny. Like, yeah, honestly. sure. Totally. And yeah. Ashley at your party actually put it in my head for the first time ever. She's like, Brian, she goes, what if you just have a slender bird for the rest of your life? I've never thought of that. Like, That's not a bad thing. Okay, but ever since then, the way it's packing up on that game, it's horrible. But no, we always thought we, when we don't got. You like that Winky the one I wonder more? I, the, the, the visual is really the one that put me speechless, actually. Yeah, okay, got it. That was so funny. And your title and book title is so funny. Everything you do. Honestly, it's so good. There's no need to hide the book. Awesome. This is too funny. Is this silly? Talking about. All right, here we go. Radio. This is the last part, okay, Buck, and then we're done. X Rock 105, the Rock Doctor, Dr. Nicola of Pura Vida Healthcare. Address <laughs> your complaints to her. It is taking your calls, questions, and concerns. This is the radio station. 385 This is the radio station's problem. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you could text us at 970 553 9001. Uh, let's see here. Uh, another text here. Why won't the over the counter drugs cure my jock itch? <laughs> wow. See, we opened up a can of worms this morning. Well, that, but this is good. This is why we have this show. Yes, it's because asked, these are legitimate questions. Anonymously ask the questions you're mortified to ask. Fantastic. So why won't? I mean, 
And and that it, and it probably isn't just Jokic. I mean, I had a hell of a time. An athlete's foot and Jokic are, are so roughly the same. They're fungal infections, right? right. Mm-hmm. And over the counter did not work for my athlete's foot. Well, so here's the deal: is that most of that is probably what they call candida, a very specific type of yeast. And so um, it's the same thing with recurrent jock itch or recurrent yeast infections in women. Um, there's probably a systemic or a body-wide candida and issue. And so if, with people, you, if you're having recurrent jock itch or yeast infections, I would highly recommend going on a really like a sugar-free diet. That means like fruit, dried fruit, honey, all that stuff, gone. Because if you've ever made bread, the first thing you do is put the yeast in water and add sugar, uh-huh. right? Because that's what ferments the yeast. Right. And that's what they eat and that's what they feed on. So if you're eating a sugary diet, you're feeding the yeast and you're in, in your crotch. Well, and, and I mean, the that tends to manifest itself in those two areas because they're probably more sweaty. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah, absolutely. They're they're moist. They're dark. They're all that sort of stuff. Yeah, all the things that you know. We don't hear. How about you get like a, a, a that kind of thing you know, in your armpit? I think you you uh, you can. Right. You know, there are there are people have armpit rashes and they're just like I don't know what it is. I've been here forever. You know, and it's usually this candida, this kind of yeast. Got it. And so it's important to do an internal um, anti yeast. And you know, in my practice, I use herbs um, that are really really effective. Oil of oregano is one that I use. This is a lot, but concentrated and in capsule forms because it burns if, you, <laughs> if it's in liquid. My esophagus is <laughs> melting! I know, so oh, if you get oil of oregano, essential oil from the store, because you heard me say it helps with fungus, dilute it. Dilute it in another oil before you put it on your crotch. Just telling you now <laughs> that I am telling you from Yeah, experience. I got rid of my jock itch. It burned off yeah, the first it, four layers yeah, of it, skin. It, but it, And it will do that. That's exactly what will happen. So hear me now. Get essential oil of oregano and dilute that sucker in almond oil or sesame oil or olive oil or whatever, but dilute it, and then you can apply that topically, and then you can get oil of oregano capsules. Um, I like the ones from Gaia, and um, and uh, take those internally, and then cut the sugar out of your diet for at least a month. Um, at least, I would say, until the rash resolves, plus another month. Now... On this show, you I don't know if it was you or if we had somebody text us a question, but you, we were talking about the red apple cider vinegar. and I, Not red apple, just apple. Or apple, yeah. apple yeah. cider vinegar. Apple cider vinegar, yeah, whatever. <laughs> for some <laughs> reason, I call it red apple cider. I know. Because I like saying. red apples. What can I say? I'm just saying, when people go to the store looking for red apple cider vinegar, they're probably not going to find You're not going to find it. Mm-hmm. Um, but you want the one with the, what they call the mother inside, so you'll see the little cloudy stuff at the bottom yeah. of the vinegar. That's what the one that you want. You don't want the one that's purified. I did. I started doing that when we were, and I think it was like back in December. And I, and I remember off the air, she's like, okay, well, you got to dilute it. No. Okay. Because it tastes like crap. You, you put it into a cup of water, <laughs> and then you got to drink that whole cup. You're like, drink. I, I'll do the, I'll you know, get the, the ounce, I'll do a, a shooter, uh-huh. put them out, and chase it right away with the water. Yeah, either, you know, either way, that's fine. Got to watch that awful taste out of my mouth. I, I mean, you're drinking vinegar, so it's not going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just not going to be great. But right. you could add lemon and a little bit of raw honey to it. Well, um, could I put sugar in it? Raw honey. No sugar? No sugar. Yeah. Yeah, but they actually like Bragg's, which is a company that makes you know um, Bragg's amino acids and apple cider vinegar. They actually make apple cider vinegar drinks that you can buy, um, but I don't know. I just like getting the bottle because I know it's. The, the I don't know why you'd spend two bucks on a drink when you could just dilute buy the it, for dilute it, and yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, but anyway. Okay, another text here on our text line from Sherry. Where to go? There it is. Okay, well I guess we'll change the subject here. Talk to me about sunscreen. Oh, <laughs> it feels so tame after the rest of today's conversation. Right. <laughs> um, I guess Sherry didn't want to hear about your book adventures anymore. <laughs> Change of the subject. Um, you know, uh, sunscreen's a really tough one because, yes, the incidence of skin cancer is going up significantly. And But what's interesting is that the rates of sun- skin cancer have been going up um, on the same trajectory as the use of sunscreen and so really yes Mm -hmm. and so um, it's not actually as protective as we think so 
I prefer a mineral-based sunscreen, a natural sunscreen, if you have to use it so that your skin doesn't burn and hurt. Um, I had a very, very fair-skinned, red-headed red um, professor in my medical school, and she would just pop a bunch of antioxidants uh, before she went out hiking. She never wore sunscreen, and she would burn like crazy. But when you have antioxidants, a lot of antioxidants in your body, then you're going to be able to not burn because that's what's happening is your skin is essentially cooking, right? Yeah. Um, and so if you're able to protect it from the inside out, so upping antioxidant status is a really, really good idea in order to prevent burn burning and also to prevent cancer. Uh, where do you get antioxidants? I mean, is that something you go down the cereal aisle? Kellogg's, antioxidants. Yeah. Yeah, no, <laughs> those are not going to be the ones that help prevent skin cancer. Does Kellogg's make antioxidants? I'm sure they have, like, <laughs> fortified with whatever. Fortified um, with it, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, you can just go to whatever health food store, or we carry them at the office. Um, and then anything that is, any of the berries that are really, really dark, or plums, or any of those fruits that have a really dark skin, most of the flesh inside is um, is clear, right? And so that dark skin is protecting the fruit of the berry um, from oxidation and from light, right? right? So when we eat a lot of those foods that have dark skins, then we are actually ingesting the same properties, right? Wow. It's so cool how nature does that, right? And yeah, nature kind of had this figured out. Yes, what about, I mean, I, I remember when I was younger, my, my mom was, like this time of the year when it started getting nice, my mom would say things like, you know, well, don't go outside for too long. You know, like almost like building my skin up. Yes, exactly. That too. Mm -hmm. And, Absolutely. you know, and gradually I would turn darker and darker as the summer went on. Yep. So it got to the point where, yeah, I could be out for 12 hours a day and Absolutely. not even get slightly pink. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so and, and the part of the issue too with the vitamin D deficiency that we're seeing is that people are slathering up in sunscreen or they're um, wearing, you know, long clothes and they're wearing sunglasses every single time they're outside and we're not receiving any sunlight on our skin and more importantly in our eyes um, and because oh you need to come down to my house when this show's over I'm gonna have my hippie shorts on and that's it <laughs> okay I'm gonna take your word for it <laughs> <laughs> just saying yeah but that's just it right is is there there is a healthy it can be a healthy relationship to the Sun I think we've kind of created this culture that like the Sun is evil and must be protected from yeah um, we're all vampires you'll yeah. melt if you go into the Sun yeah absolutely you'll turn shimmery Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, my dad's had skin cancer removed, and he's hardly ever outside at all. You know, he's done, has very, very little sun exposure. So I don't know that it's correlative that way. I think it's more of an issue of um, lack of nutrition and um, uh, lack of antioxidants. Lack of, lack of so, got a box of Kellogg's antioxidants? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Eat berries. No, you got to look. Eat berries and dark, dark fruits. You have to look specifically for that box. It, right. it, it can't be fortified with. It's got to be. Antioxidants. Right. It, it, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But isn't it cool that when the sun gets stronger in the summer, that's when berries and plums and all of these foods come into season? Like, there's a natural rhythm of eating seasonally. It's called a growing season. It's called a growing season, but it's also inherently protective in the same way that, um, you know, in the fall and the winter, we have more root vegetables and meats and kind of heavy, comforting, warming, fatty foods. And in the summer, when, it, when we need those to keep us warm and to keep the weight on and, right. you know, in times where there's typically or at least historically less. But over the summer, the <laughs> did you, I don't know what just happened. Um, over the summer, we got a text. You know, it's it's hotter, and so the foods are lighter and more cooling, and that sort of thing. So if you're eating in accordance with the seasons, you're probably going to be getting more of what you need. Uh oh. Mark wants to know: Are you a fan of Fifty Shades of Grey? <laughs> so we're done. <laughs> uh, no, we're not quite done. No, we are. If this is where we're going today, we're done. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll actually speak to that because I feel like we have to have more tolerance and curiosity about our sexuality. I, I really do. I feel like we are so... We use sex to sell everything, yet we can't talk about it and we can't have any sort of alternative preferences. And I think people get really suppressed. I mean, do you know what the biggest issue facing teenage boys is right now? It's porn addiction. Because, really? Yes. Like huge because they have so much access. And nobody's talking to them about healthy sexuality. You know, it's, it's becoming a bit of a crisis. So I'm going to say in, in the spirit of expanding our tolerance for talking about sex and sexuality, yes, I'm a huge fan of Fifty Shades of Grey. One of my kids, uh, 
back when he, you know, we got his, he got his first cell phone. He was like 15, 16 years old. You know, so yeah, hey, get your phone. I get the first bill, and there's a couple of hundred dollars in these charges. I'm like, let me see your phone. And he's got pictures of all these topless girls. I'm like, I mean, as, you don't want your kid just looking at that nonstop. No, not nonstop, but like it's a great opportunity to have a conversation. And we did, and I said, dude, for nineteen ninety five, and this is all you got, we can get you a subscription at a website where you can look at it for a month. <laughs> Or maybe get him some magazines. Well, that's what it was. I mean, you yeah. go online and at least... Right. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe start having a conversation. We ended up having a conversation right. about, you know, because this, this is not how you look at women. Well, and this is the problem. If, you know, boys' first introduction to sexuality is porn, that's going to really set them up. You know, I was reading a fascinating article um, in a magazine a couple of months ago about the Twitter, or sorry, the um, Tumblr culture. And, and it's a game, like how many women men can sleep with in a night, like three and four in one night. And then they interviewed, and they were like, yeah, it's just fun. And like, I just, I mean, it's too easy. And then they interviewed the women and they were like, well, I mean, maybe we would actually have a connection, but this is my only way in the door to, for him to actually meet me. And so I'm oh, good essentially God. whoring myself out in the hopes of meeting someone. <sighs> I'm like, it is like, there's craziness going on. So this idea of talking about sexual health is really, really pressing. Uh, I, I agree with addiction you. Is and if you, you have kids, you need to have that conversation. The first thing they're going to tell you, I'll guarantee is, oh, I already know. Oh, absolutely. And, you, and as a parent, you got to push past that. Absolutely. And you normalize it, and you talk about pleasure, mm -hmm. and you talk about pleasuring your partner, and you talk about respect, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's really, really, really important. I know kids don't like to talk to their parents about it, but, you know. Start or young. find somebody else. Like I've talked, I mean, already, I mean, our kids are eight, you know, and I've already talked to multiple friends of my sons about sex because their parents were shy and that was okay. But then they know I'm comfortable talking about it. And so we've just started having a very, very G rated conversation. Ah, another idea for you. You can, you could write a children's sex book. I, I mean, where you're discussing that and call it Winky the one eye. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll call Green Sludge. <laughs> no, that's your diet. That's your, your health that's food book. <laughs> I, I got you. Cut. See, look, I'm here to help you. Just pumping out the million dollar ideas. And look at us. We're out of time. <laughs> Dr. Nicole, I, I, I do appreciate you coming in here. I mean, this, this is good information. And, and I, if folks want to get in touch with you, how do they do it? Um, give us a call, 970-426-1684. And we're in the middle of our the Durango Detox. But um, we've had so many people that... Yeah, we didn't even get to that today. I know, that's okay. But we've had so many people who wanted to do a 10-day detox, but the timing didn't line up for them. They were actually just opening it up. And you can still access it anytime you want, and but do it on your own schedule with all the same support. So Is that on, on the website? Yeah, at puravidahealthcare.com. Or give us a call, 970-426-1684. And join us again next week for The Rock Doctor. <laughs> We're going to say this all together on X-Rock 105. There you go.